Hello everyone, I'm Dr. John Bartimus and I'm excited today to share some news with you connecting the gut and gut health to dopamine levels and dopamine's impact on psychosis, schizophrenia, autism, focus and concentration issues. This information is out there in the research in various areas and various pieces but has been uh, brought together and combined by the masterful thinker, educator, and clinician, Dr. Alex Vasquez. So he gets all credit for putting this into a coherent thought and concept. Now, how does the gut connect to, say, psychosis or ADHD or autism? Well, the, the more and more research that's happening out there on chronic disease in general, the more and more we're seeing the gut involved and that's no different for these conditions. And what, what is being found is that commonly in autism there are there is gut overgrowth or gut dysbiosis or imbalance of good versus bad bacteria in our gut microbiota. And specifically with autism and psychosis what seems to be the trend is that people are infected with a gram-positive bacteria called Clostridium or Clostridium species of bacteria. Clostridium are gram positive and this gram positive overgrowth leads to what's called gut dysbiosis. And the reason gut dysbiosis is important is because we have overgrowth of potentially pathogenic or blatantly pathogenic bacteria and these bacteria produce metabolites that are toxic to our system. So, for example, uh, in the case of Clostridium, which is gram-positive, Clostridium produces two metabolites that are specifically relevant to this conversation. One is a mouthful, it's called 3,3-hydroxyphenyl-3-hydroxypropionic acid. Say that three times fast. But it's abbreviated HPHPA. So that's the first metabolite. The other metabolite that they produce is called p -cresol. And those metabolites are toxic to our physiology. And how are they toxic? Well, what they will do is they will interfere with normal conversion of dopamine to epinephrine. So dopamine conversion to epinephrine or adrenaline is interfered with. So normal conversion is interfered with. This interference with normal conversion leads to an increase of dopamine in the system and a decrease of epinephrine in the system. So how does that manifest clinically? Well, an increase in dopamine manifests um, clinically, as we stated earlier, it can manifest in autism, can manifest in psychosis, schizophrenia, or addictive behaviors. Uh, a decrease in epinephrine can manifest in issues with focus and concentration or executive function, so our ADDs, ADHDs. Now, those are all problems in and of themselves, but what can happen is dopamine, too much dopamine, obviously is not something that we want in the system because those, those conditions are not normal or healthy. So dopamine can be metabolized to an intermediate called aminochrome. But the problem with that is that aminochrome is also toxic to the system. Aminochrome causes an increase in absorption of iron and this is neurotoxic. So it can cause death to neurons via neuroinflammation and or oxidative stress. So um, when looking at conditions such as autism or such as psychosis, schizophrenia, addiction, uh, focused concentration, ADD, ADHD, these are all things that commonly in the mainstream medical model are, are um, you know, classified as neurologic disorders or, or psychologic disorders, so oftentimes the brain chemistry is addressed, but many times the gut is left out or never looked at. And if we have a gut driver or a big time factor contributing 
to the case that's never being looked at, then throwing all the all the drugs we can at it may not solve the issue because we're leaving a fire burning elsewhere that can perpetuate the problem. So in taking a functional medicine approach or paradigm with these with these people, we want to take an autistic child and say, hey, yes, we're, we're dealing with the cognitive and behavioral aspects of the condition, but has anyone looked at his gut or her gut? Has anyone looked at their nutrition and their immune function? Are they infected? Do they have dysbiosis? So we want to look there. Same with ADD, ADHD children. Same with, um, or adults. Same with people with psychosis or schizophrenia. Um, the antipsychotic drugs classically are, are dopamine antagonists, so it's believed that their therapeutic effect is coming from inhibiting or decreasing the dopamine levels. So just another video explaining that we are holistic individuals and everything in the system matters. We don't want to get too myopic or focused in on just one area when we're looking at a certain condition because the more research that's done, and the more great thinkers there are out there like Dr. Vasquez who are taking that research and synthesizing it into an actionable concept, uh, the more we're seeing that the whole person needs to be observed, examined, and treated. I'm Dr. John Bartimus and I encourage you to keep seeking the truth and I'm here to help share it with you and help you reach a life at Optimal. Have a great day.